I'm going to show you how to paint three semi-abstract paintings using a photograph. Let's get started. I'm wetting my paper with a one inch flat brush right down to the bottom. Really spend time doing this because it will give you more time as your painting won't dry as quickly. So just allow the water to soak through the membranes of the paper. Remember if your painting does dry out, spritz it with the spritzer bottle. So I'm painting the yellow first wet in wet with my flat one inch brush. Just above halfway wet into wet. Now I'm applying the orange colour just above the yellow wet into wet there. This orange colour will prevent any blues from turning green with the yellow. As you saw there I'm tilting and adding a little bit more of that orange wet into wet and tilting allowing the paint to flow. I'm painting some of the reflections in the water wet in wet using the yellow and the orange with my flat one inch brush. I've swapped to my size 12 round brush and I'm painting the alizarin crimson wet into wet in the sky just above the orange. I've loaded my brush with the alizarin crimson and cerulean and I'm painting this wet in wet at the top of the sky where you can see that beautiful lilac colour pushing that in to the pink. I'm tilting the painting now getting the colours to mix together on the paper. Take your time doing this as you get beautiful atmospheric results. I'm mixing up some colours for the shadows on the clouds using the cerulean alizarin crimson, a little bit of cobalt blue to make it touch darker and a pinch of yellow. If you add too much yellow as you can see here it goes green. If that happens add some more of the cobalt blue or ultramarine and then a pinch more of the alizarin crimson so you've got this beautiful neutral violet grey shadow colour. I'm loading my brush now taking the excess paint off on my paper towel and painting the shadow colour on the cloud here on the right damp into damp and I'm tilting here to get rid of any excess puddles on the right hand side. I've added some more cobalt blue to the violet grey mix to make it slightly darker took the excess paint off on my paper towel and I'm painting some dark clouds here on the left hand side more towards the horizon damp into damp remember the clouds will get smaller as they go towards the horizon because they're further away and that will create depth in your painting I'm just working my way across the middle here painting damp into wet I'm following the photograph but I'm not copying it. I'm using it as a reference to inspire me. Going back here to the left hand painting, painting damp into damp and painting damp into damp now on this top right cloud which is a lot bigger. Remember to take the excess paint off on your paper towel. You want your paint to be damp, not wet. It will run too much. It could also cause cauliflowers. So I'm starting off now with a cerulean. I've gone to my size 10 round brush, slightly smaller, and I'm just painting this blue in the gaps here and there. Using the tip of my brush, remember to take the excess paint off on your paper towel so you can control the amount of paint on your brush. Remember a wet wash going into a damp wash can cause blooms and cauliflowers. So I'm mixing up here the alizarin crimson with the cobalt blue with a pinch of the yellow again to make this beautiful dark colour. I took the excess paint off on the paper towel and I'm painting damp into damp with my size 10 round brush to create some more shadows here. It really does bring the sky to life. And again, I'm looking to the photograph as a reference, a source of inspiration without copying it. Painting a little bit more shadow on this large cloud here to the right. And again, making sure I take off the excess paint off of my paper towel to control the moisture on my brush as I paint these smaller clouds going off into the distance here and there using the tip of my brush. The bottom part of the painting has dried out a little so I'm spritzed it with my spritzer bottle tilting to allow the water to flow down at the bottom of my painting. And I'm just painting now some of that cobalt teal. You can use the cerulean in the water to paint some of the reflections in the sky. Also using the shadow colour, trying to mirror what I painted in the sky above. I'm using my size 10 round brush painting wet into wet. It dried a little bit here on the left hand side. So I'm using a clean damp brush 
just to soften and blend the hard edge developing there. And again, I've used my spritzer bottle just to spritz the sort of reflection area, just to make sure the paper and painting doesn't dry out too quickly in this area while I work wet into wet and damp into damp. And I'm just taking off any excess puddles with my paper towel. I've squeezed out three colours, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine and Payne's Grey. I'm using the Ultramarine tube to kind of mix the colours on the bottom of the tube. And I'm going to literally sort of swipe here on the damp painting to start to paint in some of the details that I can see in the photograph. I'm very loosely interpreting this photograph because you're going to get these wonderful semi-abstract effects, especially using the bottom of the tube in this way and mixing the tube colour in the palette where you get these amazing interesting darks not just one flat dark but you'll get warm darks and cooler darks by mixing the Payne's Grey with the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. I've actually put the Burnt Sienna in the middle so I get sort of warm darks with the Payne's Grey and also beautiful darks with the Ultramarine. You may want to swap that Burnt Sienna maybe for Alizarin Crimson if you fancy a few more violet dark colours. I'm using the tube to print to create the masts here on the left hand side. The sky has pretty much dried so I've got these lovely textured effects of the masts in the sky here and there. Again I'm loosely interpreting the photograph. Some areas here in the water have dried but some areas have wet so it's really worked out quite nicely and as you can see the beautiful colours of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna especially there in the foreground area. You can use a plastic card if you prefer instead of the tube paint, but I just thought it'd be fun to do. As you can see, you can create these wonderful sort of semi-abstract marks. Again, I'm loosely interpreting this photograph. And what I love about the trio, having three paintings, it really does take the pressure off. You can almost sort of do the same painting three times and take out the details and just sort of apply these really sort of basic sort of shapes. And what I do at this stage is I tend to not look at the photograph anymore. I'm kind of looking at my little paintings and then working with them and creating paintings now from my imagination, seeing what works. One thing I will point out is always keep that light. The light is so important, especially when you are using darks like this. This is really kind of freshly squeezed tube paint. So you'll get some really dark tonal values. What I'm doing here is I'm just going for the darks and details now. I'm using the corner of the tube of paint here and I'm sort of drawing little circles. Adding these details really brings the painting to life. I'm adding some darks here in the corner, again using the corner of my tube of paint to add these little circles and details. And just going back and pressing in here, just adding some darks, printing with the bottom of the tube here, creating the masts. It's not always what you paint, it's what you leave out of a painting. It allows the viewer to use their imagination and to make up for those gaps in the painting, which can be so creative. And remember, less is more. I'm just applying a few more darks, damp into damp here with the bottom of the tube of paint. I must say, I'm really enjoying myself. I love sort of using the corner as well to draw with, with the paint adding these little details, printing with the bottom of the tube of paint as well. So I'm just finishing this stage by cleaning off the bottom of my tube of paint. I'm just going to use a little bit of table salt now to sprinkle onto the damp surface just here and there. Again, less is more with salt. I don't want this to overpower the painting, but it'll actually soak up the paint to create light textured areas once the painting is dry. I'm just using a plastic store card cut up just to swipe some of the damp paint to create light areas here and there. I find it easier to use the plastic card than the bottom of the tube of paint. And I'm just swiping and lifting here to create some light in the water. Remember, you wanna make sure your paint is damp and not too wet to lift off the paint. 
and if you're new to this technique I would practice it beforehand. I've removed the washi tape and as you can see just using this photograph I've managed to get these kind of three semi-abstract expressive watercolour paintings which I hope will inspire you to maybe do the same. And if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube and get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials why not think about joining my Patreon membership. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting. Bye for now.